Hey, what's up, guys? How's it going? In this video, I'm going to walk through this lead code number 863, all nodes distance k in binary tree. So, this question was asked by Facebook, Amazon, and it was asked by 19 times in the past six months. Uh, so, let's walk through this uh, problem. So, given the root of a binary tree, the value of the target uh, node, target, and uh, an integer k, we need to return an array of values of all nodes that has a distance exactly equal to k from the target node. And uh, we can return the answer in any order. So uh, let's look at this graphic, also this uh, example. Uh, we are given a tree look and the target is five, which is highlighted in yellow over here. And the distance is two. So we need to uh, look for all the nodes that is uh, has a distance as a two in the distance away from the target. So for example, uh, seven is an answer, four is an answer, and one is an answer. So all of them has a distance of two, which is exactly equal to k, right? So the distance of one is one and two, right? So the distance of seven from five is, uh, is one plus one, which is two. And the distance of four from five is also two, right? And we go here and then go here, one plus one. So immediately you can see this could be a DFS uh, problem. As you can see, the starting point will be it from the target. And then we go go out. And we traverse um, k times. In this case, example, in this case it's two times. So we go from uh, the target uh, by the k steps. Uh, for example, from here, from one and two, and from one and two, and from one and two. So we will reach out to, to the other surrounding nodes that has two distance away from the target. But the problem is that this is a tree. It's difficult to go back to the parent. We can traverse to the uh, child node by uh, calling either the left or the right. For example, in here, we can call it to the, uh, to the right and then go to the two and then from the two the nodes we go to the left or to the right. But problem yeah, now this is the problem. We cannot go back to the parent and then and then this one is the child of the parent root node. So in order to solve that problem, uh, we have to build a uh, neighbor uh, graph dictionary where the key the dictionary the key in the dictionary will be uh, the the value of the node, and the value will be um, its neighbor. Either it could be the parent, or to the it could be the child. So let's walk through the example together. So we first establish a neighbor. Uh, dictionary is the default dictionary. So this is a nested dictionary. And, and the key is being the value of the node. And the value will be another dictionary. Inside another dictionary, it has three keys. One is the parent, another one's left, another one's right. It has three different keys. And in the inside, the Dictionary it collects all the neighbors. So, for example, the graph for the root node. So, be looking at the value for the root in the dictionary, and then within that second dictionary, the parent will be nothing because there's no the root node has no parent, and also the root node has if the root node has a left child, and then we append to the net the Nested dictionary uh, would be the child on the left, also the child on the right. And then after that, we traverse across the entire tree to build up that uh, neighborhood dictionary. So let me show you our the final product. As we can see, uh, this is the, the graph dictionary we just built. So that corresponds to this tree, right? And the uh, first one is the root. So the key is three. Uh, the tree has no parents, so parents equal to none. 
the left equal to 5 and the right equal to 1. And the second one is 1, which points to this guy over here. And it has the parent is 3 over here. And uh, the left one is 0 at the bottom. And the right is 8, also at the bottom. And uh, the next one is 8, right? So basically this one over here, and the parent is 1. And um, it has no child. That's why it is nothing. Uh, in the nested dictionary. So we build up this uh, a neighborhood relationship graph. That This is something that we can use for uh, the BFS, the, sorry, the DFS, which we will do in this uh, function over here. So basically uh, we have a result. So we could collect all the, num uh, the result in the, in the eligible note. Also, we have a scene set to keep track of uh, all the, the nodes that we have seen along the way, so we don't repeat our work, and we don't need to print it anymore. So, um, for the DFS, we will first when we come across a value, we will append it to the scene set, and if the remaining, so this remaining means the the distance, the remaining distance between the current value to the target. If the remaining is zero, then that means we've already reached out to the, the correct neighbor. So each time when each time when the, the target branch out, the remain will minus one. So when we reach when this target reach out to here, uh, the remain will minus one. So from here the remain is two. And go to when it goes to here, the remain will be one. When you go to here, we we may will, will be zero. When again, when uh, the target the target stays here, when you go out to here, this node the remain will be equal to one. When it's it this node from go go from this node go to this node, the remain will be minus one. In this case, uh, the remain will equal to zero again. So this one is the same idea. The remain will be zero. So when the remain is zero. That means we have already found the eligible neighbor and then we append it to the result. And we don't have to branch out again. Because when you branch further out, right, it won't the it the distance is too far far away from the target. That's why we return, we don't need to do the rest. And also and then uh, 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 if the remain is not zero, we'll continue the branching out. Okay, so and then we look at the current neighbor. And uh, look back to the graph, this neighbor graph that we built, and then look at the current value, and and then we get the parent, right? If the parent is not none, means that we this neighbor, uh, this value has a parent, and then we do a DFS on that parent, right? If the parent has not been seen before, and then we do a DFS on the parent. Also, we do the same thing for the left and the right child. By doing this, we we recursively call this function, and then the starting point will be the target. From we go from the target, go from the target, and then branch out. That's why the starting point is always the target, and then the remain at the target will be k, and then we can submit that, and it works as you can see. So, uh, in terms of the time complexity, uh, it could be a bit of n. Uh, when we build up the graph. As you can see, we have the traverse or the nodes. And, and then in the second case, it will be the DFS. Not the second case, the second step is also a big of n as well in the worst case scenario. So in total, it's a big of two n's and uh, the constant is job. So it's big of n uh, solution. For the base complexity uh, is also big of n because we did this uh, neighbor uh, graph dictionary and it collects all the numbers uh, from the from the graph from the from the tree nodes um, so this comes from this the neighbor graphs and also uh, the scene set is also taking space as well to collect all the numbers that we have been seeing along the way and that's a big event as well in the worst case scenario so that's so much in my solution uh, i hope this is helpful if it is please like and subscribe that will be a huge support thank you so much for watching I will see you in the next video. Thank you.